good morning. It's a great to see you on the audience and also the online And uh, and I want to thank those uh, online um, from all over the world. And what's what's breaking about this uh, pandemic and that it has you know made us uh, you know use technology wisely. So I know there are people watching us uh, from all over. So thank you for those uh, online. So I'm going to do a um, quick intro. Well, actually, before that, before I introduce Bertha, uh, our moderator for today. I need to give us a plug uh, in terms of our exhibition going on right now. Uh, please, afterward, uh, extend the figure, uh, the art inspiration of La Lang. In fact, there's some uh, her work at Art Basel, and I'm sure it's going to be at Christie's as well. So uh, check out. I just saw it yesterday. It's an exquisite, exquisite show. Uh, so please uh, check out our exhibition and also our June um, 8th. We're going to do an art and cultural virtual benefit, and with it, we have about almost 50 artists um, have donated their artwork, and it's available in this wonderful catalog. And mostly uh, the artists are from all over, mostly from Hong Kong. So we are, we're really excited that the artists have donated um, uh, the artwork to help us with our June 8th benefit. And 50% of the proceeds from the auction will go directly to the artists. And, you know, we want to thank the collaboration of the, uh, cooperation of the artists themselves and their gallery. So that's really exciting. Uh, and so, on that note, I'm going to take it, uh, turn it over to Bertha. Uh, Bertha Chan is our moderator, and she's an artist, writer, curator, and producer. Uh, and she is based in between Hong Kong, Bergen, and Vienna. Uh, but uh, fortunately for us, she's here in Hong Kong today, and uh, and we're really delighted um, that Bertha is going to be speaking to really three of our um, uh, kind of uh, our gallerists talking about where Hong Kong uh, is going in the art scene. And I really, in the other day, I had a tour of M Plus um, two days ago, and it is going to be really exciting. I think Hong Kong's art scene, um, I know we're going to have some issues, but I think the art scene is going to be really exciting if, if this last couple of days and the um, uh, future of West Palo and its indication. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Bertha to get the program started. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Um, Maybe we can start with some exercise. No, um, joking. Yeah, it's, it is really early, and uh, I try to make it more fun for us to listen to today. And um, so, um, please, I will introduce uh, the three um, of our guests today. We start with Johnny. Um, so Johnny is the director of Flowers Gallery in Hong Kong. Um, he set up the Asia business after working in a gallery in both London and New York for over a decade. Uh, after studying at Chelsea School of Art in London as a practitioner, his focus shifted to commercial aspects of running a gallery. Um, Jenny, Jenny is a um, consultant with a Master of Arts focused in Literature and Cultural Studies in the University of Hong Kong, and now she is 
um, directing heart. Yeah. Um, and Charles uh, from Rossi and Rossi is now a director. After graduating a great degree in microbiology from University of Hong Kong, we have to mention this because this is such an interesting fact that now the whole art scene is shifting to <laughs> different <laughs> backgrounds of people. And yes, <laughs> you can you can use your mic by the way if you want to talk about that. But yeah, so we can start. But it was just um, a small mention of this aspect, and so we can start our talk today. We have uh, we are talking about where Hong Kong art scene is going. Um, and there are three topics that we will focus on. First, um, I would like to ask Johnny about localization, um, because I know that you <coughs> you moved from London to Hong Kong five years ago, and so um, coming from a different background, coming to Hong Kong, um, trying to adapt to the Hong Kong scene, the art scene, and the culture. How do you, what do you think the the difference and what was the challenge you were facing when you came here to open the gallery space. So, when I first uh, arrived in um, Hong Kong, um, I was actually in New York for five years before that, and it was very interesting um, to see where the, I suppose, the, the art community was here compared to those other countries. Um, and I always felt that in, in Hong Kong, um, it's been a little bit more sort of commercially driven rather than from the artist, which is very much the foundation, especially, I should say, my experience in New York, um, which um, sort of grew this, uh, you know, this community of galleries. Um, and I suppose when I first arrived here, it was trying to um, identify how you would sort of build out a, gal a gallery business, um, which was maybe a bit more sort of artist-focused. Um, so I had, uh, I had the pleasure of, we got to work with um, a fantastic artist named Michael Wolf here in Hong Kong. Um, and he was really um, sort of opened up Hong Kong for me, both through his work, but then also through his sort of artist community. Um, and as sort of I spent the next five years, it, it took us sort of four years to finally actually get a space. So it was very much just sort of looking at the different areas, how the... Um, the gallery community was opening up in Wan Chapan and, um, and even sort of Taiwan for a moment, Dif different areas which opened up. But um, it was through Michael that then he introduced Nevada Chen, another artist that we now represent and work with, um, and a showing at our Barbell Studio Club. But um, so I think one of the, the big differences was that um, I saw that. Hong Kong at the at the time, when I, five years ago, was very much about sort of these commercial galleries and and especially from the, I think the international format. You know, you've seen the big galleries come here and bring their large you know, international um, you know, blue chip artists to try and sell to the audience in the region. Um, and for me, I wanted to come here and um, work with a few more local local artists and then help build um, a community because that's what I think is the role of the gallery. Um, and it's something which I'd seen in New York um, and in London, and was sort of a, um, one of the, the key aspects of how our gallery in London really operated, was we wanted to build a home for, for the galleries, for, sorry, for the, the artists. Um, and so that's one of the, the I think, the, the key differences that I saw between um, New York, London, and Hong Kong. I will say that I think over the last few years, that has really changed. And I will say, especially over the last year, you know, there's been such uh, more attention put on local Hong Kong artists, which is a fantastic thing for the local Hong Kong community. Um, so, yeah, I think that's sort of one of the, yeah. So um, when you mentioned that when you first came here, Michael Wolf introduced you to the community of artists and mm -hmm people in Hong Kong in, in the art scene. Um, what did you do to introduce these people to into your gallery and what was your what 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 was the aspect that you were choosing to bring in who select who were selected? Well we didn't have a gallery at first. So it was very much about um, sort of gathering knowledge really over the, the 
first couple of years. Um, and really trying to just just meet as many artists and curators um, and um, get get to know the, uh, a lay of the land, really. Um, and, and that's what I, I suppose took my time doing over the first few years. Was there any aspect or like things that you wanted to to put in as the main key element in your gallery from these local artists? Um, I'll say I, I think it really it stems from the idea that these artists are connected, whether there's a um, you know a certain theme within their work, or even a connection. Um, as, as I say, they're, they're friends, which is very much with Mavana, Michael, um, and now from Mavana, some of her other um, artist friends. And um, you know, from from my experience in in New York and knowing a lot of artists there. The community of artists is everything. It's 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 how they you know expand ideas, grow as an artist, um, and and I think that's something which um, perhaps I haven't seen as much of in Hong Kong, but I think it's developing. And you know, people next to me on stage here are, are part of that and developing it. So mainly, it's within the community you will select different artists who are more like the friends of friends and and see their work closely and yes. then you choose from there yeah I exactly and, and then i think also the idea that you know i think the gallery's role is changing slightly uh, especially in terms of the actual the physical space and that physical space of the gallery becoming an extension of the artist studio where they can experiment where they can feel comfortable and feel at home mm, i see Thank you for, for, the, for the tips. Thank you. Um, artists, remember to grow your community and <laughs> include yeah. Michael and Johnny and uh, Charles, <laughs> in all, of, all of them in there. Um, so <laughs> good comes you, Jenny. Um, so we are going to talk about something that is more sensitive and serious right now. Um, uh, we are talking about how to na navigate the art expressions in Hong Kong under the censorship and its influence in the industry with you. What do you think and what was your experience being um, director for, for the past years? Um, I think uh, over the past two years, especially when the pandemic hit that, um, actually censorship is a very good subject matter and material for people to create art. And I think censorship as well um, is a powerful thing that everyone owns, not only authority. And I think when people um, think about censorship, maybe in a very negative way, but actually it can be a push factor for us to create things. And also um, not only the creators, the art makers that matters, I think, is also um, the viewers, especially the public in Hong Kong, they should have um, have a second thought or take some time when they judge or criticize or appreciate art, I think, because the public can be uh, very powerful as well. And recently there's an incident that bugs me a lot because the public is now very aware and, you know, being a bit nasty and critical, very critical about um, art, and especially to institutions in Hong Kong. And I think they should have more time thinking about the kids in Hong Kong, especially those who are unfortunate or disadvantaged. They don't have chance and also resources for them to visit um, people, you know, or art. Uh, in a region or, or in uh, other countries. So um, the institutions and, and, and platforms here we built in Hong Kong are the channels that, the only channels for them to really see mainland and also international art. So before they criticize, they should have gained more confidence and faith in themselves in educating the kids or to you know acquire critical thinking before they judge. That's what I think. So um, since you can curate the, the art in the gallery um, that reflects this kind of expressions when, when we talk about art expression, 
what are the criteria that you would you would choose to to educate the audience as well? I think it's uh, inclusiveness mm -hmm. and diversity. The community that we build, we um, having people from you know everywhere, mm -hmm. and also of different generations. And the more they talk to Hausians in the studio and talk to us, and also to engage in our programs, I think, I think naturally is an organic development for us to build a very healthy ecosystem and platform for people to communicate. And this is the most important thing, I think. So I have a question. When, when you see the artist's work and maybe perhaps some, sometime you will see something that is kind of sensitive to the public or you know, to that would touch on the security laws. Um, do you do you do anything about it, or do wow. you you know do you? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm really curious about this because, as you know, we all have to be careful about what's going on. But okay. at the same time, we also want to make make sure that there's a neutral or or a space where people can think about the art with with the the artist expression as well. So um, when you say um, it, you want to have a healthier ecosystem, yeah. um, does it all also include space for people to think about these things? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And so when you curate the art from your artists in the studio, um, is there anything you, you will make sure that is included as well, even though it's quite sensitive? I have a good faith and confidence in my artists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're so creative. And so actually, um, a lot of expressions we have in the studio are quite um, liberative, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, this question is tricky, huh? <laughs> but uh, it makes me think that uh, me, uh, as, a, as a Hong Konger, not, not just a director of heart, um, as a viewer, as a responsible viewer or um, passionate art lover, or even for those who, who just approach art, I think um, we should embrace more different voices. Mm -hmm. not, not, not only, you know. What you believe in? Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to embracing different voices, I think that's, this is why I, I would say from the gallery point of view, we have to include everything, like you said, being inclusive. And this is how we can create that environment for people to think about things that they don't actually know as well, right? To, to see something that they've never thought of as well. And this is something I would like to see more in Hong Kong in the future as well. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. So it comes to you, Charles. Are you ready? Are you smiling like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hello. Oh, great. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, for you, I the the question is. It sounds like it's simple, but it's actually the most complicated thing, <laughs> um, because it includes everyone in in this space and sure. just what we were talking about. Sure. Everything is interconnected. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about um, community building. Yeah. And what kind of space are we providing in Hong Kong um, as the ecosystem and its impact today? You think? I think I'll give a little bit of a history about like my idea of what community building is because uh, the whole reason um, I was engaged in it is because um, there was an influx of galleries coming from like central areas, different areas to the south side re uh, area. So in the Wang Kung area right now, it's just like around I think 13 to 15 different galleries and more to, to come hopefully. Um, and one of the biggest problems the gallery face when they move is well, where where the crowd go? I mean, it used to be a lot of crowds, you know, uh, just walk-ins in, in the central area. Uh, when these galleries move away, then they kind of lose that crowd. So we kind of have to re-engage with them and tell them that, hey, there's actually something happening here in the south side. Um, even till this day, I hear people complain, oh, south side is so far away, you know. Um, it, we, I never want to go there because, do you know there's an MTR now? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, there's an MTR. You know, like that, that kind of thing happened all the time. Um, so what we did together was, um, you know, Johnny was talking about building a community of artists, and uh, what we wanted to is, was to really just build a community of galleries. Um, and then we can maybe share resources in the area. So we have, you know, there's a lot of uh, um, 
We have uh, small discounts on uh, uh, a lot of the hardware stores in the area, for example. So there's are things that like galleries really like because we can buy things cheaper. Um, we're trying to work on things like with logistic companies, um, storage spaces. Uh, we're hoping that we can consolidate these things so that things can be cheaper for us and we work together in certain ways. Um, obviously, not every gallery is hop onto this kind of train. Um, you know, uh, you know, it also depends on the facilities that you know we are able to provide and we are able to come up with. Um, so, but those are kind of things that we hoping to to go towards. So that that side of community building was the kind of the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, it comes to the audience, and we were thinking, oh, how can we make sure that the audience do come? And we kind of copied this idea from uh, London. Um, there's this uh, uh, first Fridays, I think they're called. Um, basically, uh, the first Friday of every month, uh, all the uh, museums will open up for free until late, I think, as well. So anybody can go in to visit all the gallery, uh, all the museums. So we kind of took that idea. We say that we call it Southside Saturday. Um, so every uh, first Saturday of every month, we basically all the galleries will open up events, um, and sometimes it's a screening, sometimes it's an exhibition opening, sometimes it's a talk, sometimes. Uh, we did a DJ event. I don't know if you guys saw it on, up mm -hmm. there. We Shout did a DJ out event. To your DJ um, yeah, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. in, in gallery. So we, we attracted a different type of crowd for for that event, for example. Um, and I think as we, you know, when 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 a, when a single gallery does an event and nothing happens, it's kind of sad. Mm. But if everybody do, does things together, we actually get a, a, a sizable amount of audience, and people go go around the area and discover new things all the time. Um, and eventually, hopefully, that turns into a habit. So they don't okay. even have to hear us say Southside Saturday. They know mm -hmm. that there is something happening the first Saturday of every month. Is, is there a curation between the galleries and uh, the So that, that's really up to the galleries. Um, you probably know doing curation throughout, like, maybe 13 galleries is going to be very, very difficult. Like, I don't think every art fair will want to pick that mm -hmm. mantle up, let alone, like, you know, I'm from one gallery, right? Um, and try to dictate other galleries what they do is kind of eh, not not good. But mm -hmm. at least I can tell them, you know, make sure you have information in English and Chinese, for example. Um, that's something that uh, some galleries are still working on, unfortunately. Um, and hopefully that they can, you know, pull up their game as well so that, you know, we don't... We, we build our own websites and everything, so we have all the statistics, so we know people what language they look at. Um, so around 70% of people just look at the English site, but there's 30% who actually jump directly to the mm -hmm. Chinese site and need okay. the Chinese information. I so if you don't give us that kind of stuff, then mm -hmm. you're really missing 30% of yeah. your audience. I think there will be more than 30% if the, the Chinese right, content exactly. is more yeah. accessible. Right? Exactly. And, and like when uh, yeah. we talk about localization, we, yeah. we actually need to think about the local audience. Exactly. And also, I think earlier on, where I bring, I brought up a, a topic mm -hmm. that um, most of the people, when they go to an art gallery or art exhibition, in their mind, this is a thing for people who has money. Yeah. Right. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I think the grassroots, they, it, it would be so hard for them to think mm -hmm. about going to an art exhibition. So how do you build, bring that into the community um. building? Well, I mean, for example, like we did that DJ event. I think the crowd for that was completely different than like what we used to have, for example. Um, and you know, it's the friends of the DJs, and then they bring more people in. So that that, and then, but they they, they and they have a different response to the work that we were showing. We were showing some uh, Tibetan artists' work, um, and you know, it, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, maybe uh, maybe maybe somebody who can actually purchase it sees it in a different way. But when you know. Uh, during that DJ event, a lot of people came up to me and be like, oh, you know, this would be such a cool tattoo design. Like, mm -hmm. I would love to have a sleeve from this artist. You know? And he actually does tattoos. Um, and so the response is completely different, and the way you engage with that audience is different. I think maybe, you know, you know John, Johnny was talking like galleries are changing a little bit, and I think that is probably the case. And it really depends on what is the audience you're trying to reach and how you have to present the things that, that you have, um, rather than just presenting it that one way. Because mm -hmm. I felt like all galleries are presenting things yeah. that one way. Um, and it's really up to like the local galleries to actually think about how to push that and so that more audience is, a is able to engage it differently. Um, you know, we already have big auction house exhibitions already. We don't need more of them. Mm. So <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the, the events at the gallery sure. or, or community building events, you can actually do more flexible things instead of like an art exhibition. Yeah, 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 show. exactly. Like, so um, if you go on your phone right now and type in southsidesaturday.com, you'll get to see the events that happened uh, last week. 
mm -hmm. um, because uh, you know to link up with Art Basel and all the art events, we pushed uh, this month's Saturday Saturday mm -hmm. down one week. And what Can't just be oh we have to all do things together, right? Yeah. Um, I think uh, curation is also important when sure. it comes to event um, producing. I think. And also, I think galleries find their strides. For example, I think Axel Vervu did one music event uh, a while ago, and that was super successful. And now they're doing more and more music events because they realize our, our space is actually really good for like interesting music installations or sound installations. Um, and people know, them, know, know that for them now. So they, could, they would go there and visit their uh, 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 sound uh, installations during Saturday Saturday. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's an e example. Ben Brown does a lot of screenings, for example. Mm, um, Elisa does mm -hmm. a lot of screenings and a lot of talks. Right. Um, so it's also a way for galleries to sharpen themselves, to showcase, like, what they're specialized in, not just the artists, but the way they treat the artists, I think. Yeah. So come, uh, thank you for, for all these insights. Mm. Um, i like to ask all of you at the same time. Um, so are there anything you can do to actually bring in the, the collectors and, and curate curators and, and the crowd and you know the audience and um, I think Jenny at one point you mentioned that there needs to be the next generation of collectors right and how do we cultivate that I think like South Side Saturday is more about uh, a habit thing to, to cultivate that and to have different people coming in all kinds of art spaces to really uh, to engage with the people, not just to view the art. So this is very important. And for us um, at heart, uh, how to cultiv cultivate that? Um, we, we host different um, educational courses. We have open house. Uh, we have showcase. So a lot of opportunities for people to interact with our houseians. We call them houseians because our studio is hot house. Um, also to um, to do knowledge sharing, especially um, on experience sharing as well, because um, I think now the crowd building in at hot houses is very amazing because uh, people really ask different questions and actually look forward to meet professionals like Johnny and also like Charles. Yeah, they want to, you know, know, oh, how galleries talk to artists and how they help them to do career development, mm -hmm. that kind of question. And, and some of them actually shared with me that they, they don't dare to really talk to us at different spaces because they think it's too far away from mm -hmm. them. Yeah. But it's changing. So there needs a space, like an event or, or a community space, where you can actually be friends and, and build some in or, or we can just stay on stage. Together, come talk right? to us, guys. Yeah, but... Just yeah. come talk to oh, us. Sure. I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> We're not that scared. We don't bite. Yeah. Today, <laughs> there are not too many of us, so we can definitely group together after this. Um, but right now, we can also ask about uh, ask our audience if there are any questions that you want to ask. If, if you don't have any, I will ask a few questions. Great. But you can think about it if you want to ask any questions and come back to me, okay? Um, I do have one question. Um, I think a lot of artists uh, in the world, all over the world, they have no idea how to build up their career as an artist. And sometimes you see when, when artists are being approached by galleries, they would just say yes because there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, but then they don't think about how it's going to impact their future. Um, if whether they want to go into a museum, they want to be a pop artist, they want to sell prints, or they want to, you know, you, you never know. So how does it work with, with artists and the, the relationship between how you can influence them if they don't even know how to ask you these questions? Well, I, I think the, the key there is, as you said, the, the relationship, right? It's, it's how you really do connect as, you know, the artist in the gallery when you meet each other. Is there, is there a connection straight away? And it's, it's really from, from the integrity of that that then I think helps the artist grow and build up. And, you know, as you, you sort of struck the note there, it's, it's, it's about the pairing of the right gallery and the right artist. Because it's very easy to go and be with, you know, an artist who says say yes with a gallery who doesn't have you know, the same sensibility, the same style. 
So I do think it's, um, it's obviously, it's incredibly difficult being an artist, you know, finishing grad school and trying to go out and, and make your own. Um, but I think it's also imperative to choose wisely and take your time to find the right, um, the right gallery to, um, to be in a, in a relationship with, that's what it is. Um, I think the, the other thing is to, um, you know, if you can get yourself in, into group shows, et cetera, just to get some exposure and to sort of like test the water with different galleries is, is the perfect way to, um, to gain that initial exposure and, and that experience of working with a gallery as well. Because, you know, every gallery works completely differently too. And what about um, the current art scene in Hong Kong? What, what are the main themes or main directions you can see that is going? Because I know um, there are a lot of street art that is influencing the art scene. What about the rest of them? I have to say, I've been, been focusing on our, my own things for a very long time. I really haven't seen a lot of things outside. But um, recently, I actually saw a really super cool exhibition in uh, Sam Shui Po. Um, and it was done by a group called Virtue Village. They're on Instagram. You can check them out. Um, and uh, they basically rented a, a truck, uh, an eight-foot truck, and did an exhibition inside. Um, but they parked right beside uh, the market area. So around like four or five o'clock, there's a other, all these other trucks that come with during that time, which take out a bunch of uh, secondhand thrift shop looking items on the floor, and people would just like go through all that stuff. Um, so this art truck is basically parked right beside all these uh, thrift, shop, sh uh, thrift shop trucks. Um, and people would just look at the stuff that's on that art truck because they thought that that's part of the thrift shop stuff, but it's a whole exhibition they don't even realize. Um, those are things that are happening a lot in, 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 in the Kowloon side of things. Um, there's a lot of independent spaces that's happening right now as well. Um, I think the illustrator scene in Hong Kong is pretty interesting. Um, we have a few very, very good illustrators. I hope there's going to be more. Um, in terms of uh, themes, man, I think there's like a lot of big problems that's looming on our heads. I think those are like a lot of themes that's going on, right? I think <laughs> people know what they are. Um, but Oh, we'll, we'll probably get through this. Um, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get through this. <laughs> and do you curate the art in, in your gallery um, um, out from... Yeah, I mean, well, well, curate is a... I don't know. That, that, that word gets thrown around a lot. I feel like we make decisions in the gallery um, more based on, you know, how what we can provide to the artist and, you know, what, what they need because not every artist needs what we can give. And I think finding, as like, you know, what, what, what Johnny said, finding that match is very, very important. Um, you know, some artist is dreaming very, very big, but if you don't have the budget to do, to produce that kind of thing, then, you know, it won't be a good fit um, and vice versa. So. so I can see th um, there is a gap between what you just talked about at the truck by Virtual Village and also the, the art that is in the gallery. Um, how do you think we can bridge the two together? Is there a gap? Why, why is there a gap? I, I, I'm very curious because so, it feels um, like it feels like it's a perception thing. It's um, right. because I know that some of these artists they don't care that they're not going into a gallery. They sure. they doing sure. things for love. They're sure. doing art out of mm -hmm. really just to mm -hmm. right like to express their own feelings. Mm -hmm. And um, these things are often not being seen in galleries sure. or, or artists that are you know yeah. just really doing it not for the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and they are happening, and, you, and people can go out and see them. And I think the, 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 the perception that those are two different things is kind of, it's weird for me. I, I think, I think uh, you know, in a gallery setting, you're basically putting more rules on, on the artist, and the artist has to work within those rules. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they can work within those rules showcase their ability. Can okay. that, does that, that, does that, that explain it? That is a very it? good insight, yeah. yeah. So in order for, for artists to, to if they want to get into the yeah. gallery, yeah. they will have to learn certain rules. Sure, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, they're not <laughs> rules. Make it sound so like <laughs> so 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 judgmental or, or or something. But I mean, there are certain um, framework framework right? or aesthetics mm -hmm. or 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 you have to push yourself in a certain way um, to present it a certain way. 
Um, if you can do the same thing within a gallery setting, I think that's really successful, mm. right? If you can bring that exhibition that we just talked about into a gallery setting just the same mm -hmm. and make it work, wow, that's impressive. Mm. And people should notice that that's impressive, right? Mm. Yeah, that's uh, very good tips. I, I, I would like to see more of that in the future. I hope so too, yeah. It, since there are events that you can to like to to throw within the gallery space and between yeah. the community, we can definitely bridge them with with the event, yeah. right? Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And and do you have any yeah. input with with this one? Because you have twenty um, yeah. gal artists in yeah. your studio most of the time. What Charles just said is what we need in the community <laughs> in the studio because um, not that many of us uh, really give emerging artists insights about how to build their career mm -hmm. and do businesses in the art market. And I think I have to be quite harsh to them sometimes. Mm. Yeah. And I, I don't think they realize if, if they just do their own work in their own studio at home, you know. And when they meet people and really want to do good businesses and also, also to learn from the art market, they really need to know how a gallery works. And 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 for that, um, I'm I'm being quite harsh to them as well. And I, I think sometimes I will recommend them to, you know, talk to more galleries and also to think about how you can be uh, an artist that is uh, being represented by free galleries, right? Mm. If you're competitive enough, you have to do that, and there involves a lot of hard work. Now I want to clarify: like working with a gallery is not easy, by the way, because like to fill a space is hard. And especially like if you're if you're working with an international gallery, for example, you get picked up by an international gallery and you have to like complete twelve works at the same level, that's difficult. Mm. Right. Compared to if you only do small panels and like ten, you know, panels of small panels. Mm -hmm. This is completely different. Yeah. So yeah, I think a gallery does just put you know, it, it expects more from the artists. It tries to push the artists more. So obviously, as you said, you know, when you look at an exhibition that is maybe not as refined, not as then for a gallery, you will think, does this person has the chops to do a show inside a gallery, mm. right? W what do you think, Johnny? Um, I, uh, I slightly disagree, actually. Um, I, I think that the, the gallery has the responsibility to help nurture the artists to then become, you know, to their best of their ability. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, you know, I understand what you're saying, in terms of there, there's a lot of pressure maybe when a, an artist yeah. is picked up and goes into uh, a, a gallery, but but also it's it's the gallery's responsibility. They they you know they see that talent and they believe in it, and they need to help help them reach that potential. Um, and so yeah, I, I think that there's also I think this I think slight like a misconception about. You have to be commercial to then, or make your work commercial to then be into a gallery. And you don't. You know, it, it's often that you know, a gallery will take on an artist just because they believe it, put on a show, which is not commercial in any way. Mm. And then you figure out the rest afterwards, and you <laughs> figure out how to sell it based on you know just believing in the the, the vision of that artist. And uh, I, I think artists also need to. Um, need to understand that and have that belief in the gallery as well, that they are there to help them. and They're there to help build up their career and, and make them successful. Uh, also, uh, I just want to add up, I think our gallery being like much smaller and we work really closely with artists, like that just does that. But I also think there's a lot of galleries out there don't, that don't work like that. Yeah, right? I, I, then, I agree. And then there's like a lot of them basically are just spaces where you have to sign up and showcase your work in those places and hopefully get something more out of it. Um, that's also difficult, I think. So there are different styles when yeah. it comes to yeah, yeah, the yeah. management yeah. in the gallery and yeah. the gallerists. And yeah. so some of them nurture their artists, yeah. bring give them space yeah. to, to grow, yeah. and some of them will see it as a, a commercial yeah. opportunity yeah. and just to push what sells, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. And um. for artists that I, I, I met in Hong Kong, I think, um, is is very competitive, and and local and international artists or um, um, artists with different ethnicity working in Hong Kong, they have very different 
way of uh, perceiving as well on the relationship building. And of course, they, they aspire to work with galleries like you with you know, the heart and resources to, to, wor to work with them and to grow with them. But I met quite a few emerging artists in Hong Kong. Um, I think maybe some of them do not really know how much effort that galleries actually could for them. And is 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 sometimes heartbreaking because you put a lot of resources and then they they don't know where to go because they are um, some of them are quite lazy I would say <laughs> yeah okay yeah, so yeah. is it because you, you they need more guidance <laughs> they or, or they just need more guidance because they didn't know right I think they really need to read and see and hear much more things to observe more to to absorb, to absorb everything mm -hmm. yeah i see thank you um maybe I have it comes some with age <laughs> i think i was like that or when experience. i was younger too you know <laughs> yeah once you're very smart you're a bit more humble you're like okay i actually don't know anything so but we see their talents and we want sure to yeah push it. um <laughs> there are some questions online on um, oh, okay, cool. that we we can maybe answer please um because we, we already talked about a few of them, um, there are, so there are a few questions. Uh, how do you discover new emerging talents? I think this one we discussed that it's through community building, through our network of, of people, right? And um, then there's one, do you think the underground art scene and the commercial scene can ever intersect? This there we talked about just now with community building as well. Right, we will bring these underground art artists to the space by event space, and then maybe that way we can we can also find out the new emerging artist. Um, and there's one. This is interesting. Is that how do you see the future of the gallery space changing in respect to tech and online advancements? Charles, you were talking about this just now with the. Um, um, I, I think it's. Uh if you think about galleries as uh, masters of their own space, because they basically do interior design every every single exhibition, then they should also be, the next step would be to be able to design and to do everything they can do with the space on their website, on their all their online platforms. Um, if you go to visit like a lot of gallery websites now, you probably find them all look blocky, similar. Um, and that's mainly because they potentially just use a template from somewhere. Um, and those things get, you know, you, you can tell. And I think galleries really should, you know, pick that side up, you know, actually figure out the technical side of things so that it can design, um, utilize, and showcase their work better on different websites. Mm. Um, I think that's one way. I mean, it's maybe a very elementary. Everybody's talking about NFTs and, like, all these other things. But, you know, mm. we don't yeah. even have the basics down yet. Mm -hmm. yes. Come on. <laughs> if you don't yeah. have your, your website built up, we, we don't yeah. think about NFT sure. yet. Um, and, I mean, on the NFT side, too, I feel like there's so much space there. Um, you know, everybody has this craze of uh, thinking of as a new medium. But, you know, NFT really is just a, a blockchain. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a... It exists as a, as, a, as a thing. If you play video games, you probably understand it very, very easily, what they are. Um, and I think there's a lot of space for that um, to, to grow, but not in the current way, I feel. Mm. It, it's yeah. just there is also a, a huge gap from my perception Sure. to, to see the difference between the, the real art space and the online space where the NFT is a, a completely new species, yeah. Yeah. where everything is built... Um, from the base of numbers and, and the blockchain instead of from the art itself, mm -hmm. the real art. I, okay, I, I personally parts. haven't seen any, uh, I don't know, um, most of the NFT art that I've seen is very uh, just like an image, like a, a JPEG that you buy. Mm. I haven't seen an NFT work that is self-referential and I'm waiting for that. Um, right now there are we, we can talk about this tomorrow, okay, after, actually. Okay, cool. Because there is an <laughs> NFT talk oh, okay, okay, okay. tomorrow. Okay, um, okay. But we, we have one more question. How has the art collecting changed over the years in Hong Kong? Um, do you any, does any one of you have any opinion on this? Has it changed? Uh, what's the direction it's going? I, I mean, one of the ways that it's really changed is just through being more online. People don't have to see things physically as much. And especially, you know, over the last year, um, I think overall, you know, the art market in general globally has, you know, done quite well. 
um, and shifted more online where people don't have to go and s- physically see things as they haven't been able to. Um, and, and that's definitely here to stay um, for the future. So what about the trends? Are there any trends in what the people are collecting here in Hong Kong as well? I mean, there's always going to be trends as long as there's auction houses. Mm. <laughs> but, but those, we're talking about something that has been building up for years. What about the new ones? I, guess, I think because of COVID um, and the pandemic, probably everybody's starting to look a bit more inwards, local community things, um, local artists. You can see like a lot of galleries picking up local artists um, recently. Also because you know you can't rely everything on overseas now. If you want, can't ship things in, can't get the artists in. Sometimes very difficult to do a show. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's a hard question. <laughs> I just see there's indeed a diversity of art um, in Hong Kong. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard for us to tell because I mean, we, we, we look at our, as a, from a gallery point of view, maybe we look at our sales figure. But then in the end, we just sell, we, we're still selling our stuff. Um, it's hard for us to see a trend change mm-hmm. if you're just looking at our side of things, but I think. What about, um, well, Jenny, when you talk about inclusion and yeah. also people, artists from other ethnicity background, yeah. are they bringing in new elements in the local scene as well? Definitely. And actually talking about trend making, and um, I, I think uh, hard take an approach to that as well, to be competitive as well as to hopefully make a trend, is to do a lot of collaborations and also push artists to do collaborations like Dan and Puizi in uh, the studio. Uh, we, we made them um, uh, co- co-host and uh, create uh, uh, an exhibition at Hot Hall last year. Um, so um, from, from that point, of um, then Hot realized that actually people really want to see collaborative works because we receive a lot of feedbacks yeah, and then from then on until now, we do our programs like uh, resilience, um, and also a lot of uh, different artworks happening in ho- uh, hot house now. Um, basically, collaborations. Mm. And yeah. what what has changed ever since because of these co- collaborations? I see artists uh, taking that approach more and more to gain exposure, to challenge themselves, and to also. Um, you know, grow and and to to seek for process more um, than end product. I would say. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, come, coming back to you, Charles. I, I was just thinking in my head just now about what you said about the sales number. Mm. What well, can you tell us more about this? Because in the end, we're talking about selling art. Sure. So I want to know about. I, I like I like to think about it. We're we're keeping the artists alive, but you know, <laughs> that's why we have to sell. Um, you know. Talking about uh, you, you talk about trends as well, um, and I think this is something that uh, has been going on my my mind. This is not a trend yet, but I hope it becomes a trend, which is maybe a go back to a patronage model rather than like a buy and sell model that we have right now. Hmm. Um, you know, a lot of Patreon things are happening. I don't understand. I don't see why not galleries can't try to utilize that model a little bit and maybe bring back this idea of, of patronage to. To the, to the to the community, okay. and especially for the local community, I think right. that's something that maybe could work. Can we uh, elaborate more on um, this? I mean, there's a lot of like crowdsourcing, crowdfunding Patreon pages you can find. Um, a lot of YouTube, uh, you know, produce studio that produces good videos. They utilize Patreon as a place for them to um, gain money from their directly from their audience. So imagine paying maybe a smaller sum of amount of, amount of, amount of money, um, but at the end of the year because you pay it every month. Let's mm. say maybe you pay 1,000, 2,000 Hong Kong every month for this artist. At the end of the year, you get an artwork that is equivalent to what you pay the whole year. I see, so you're thinking right. of a system that you can contribute right. every month to support sure. the artist. Sure, I mean, that, that model ecosystem. changes because you're not looking at the work anymore, you're looking at the artist. You're looking at what the artist is doing and what they're producing. Mm. You don't have no idea what you're gonna get at the end of the year, you don't get to choose. So you really got to look at what the artist is doing in that That's case. That's a good idea. That focuses the, 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 you know, the focus away from the work itself, but to the artists themselves. Mm. That's not a trend right now, mm. but I hope it's a trend. 
<laughs> It'll be easier on us too. <laughs> I think within the community right? and the underground scene, it will probably more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that. like this will definitely right. work probably there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. How do you see this, Johnny? How do you see this act? Like, well, I, I think it's it's. You know, it's already worked with very wealthy individual collectors who have foundations, museums. Will often, you know, sort of I, I, not 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 invest, but just support an artist. And you know, buy up buy up work, sort of every exhibition they have, and you know, it's, it's the way that the the wealthy have gotten a lot more wealthy recently. I kind of think the responsibility should be on them, the the true art investors, to really get behind these artists and and support them in that way. And being patrons, and I think in the uh, the more sort of you know Renaissance style and, and that idea is sort of another um, aspect for that to work. Mm -hmm. And especially when those people do have the um, the space and the ability to showcase and show the work for people to actually see it in museums. Um, and I think you are seeing that happen. Um, unfortunately, I think what's probably more those people that have the museums are collecting the sort of blue chip artists and showing that. But hopefully, within time, especially in the region, they will start to just get behind these artists and um, support them in that way. And 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 as you know, as when that happens to one artist, you know, going back to what I was talking about before, within a community, it benefits everyone else who they are surrounded by. Um, whether it be through that's part of the the gallery's network or just individually the artist or um, creation, it, it helps elevate the whole group. So I, th I think the responsibility is on the collector. That. <laughs> It's a responsibility of the whole ecosystem, I believe, right? It's the community building again we're talking about. Okay, so thank you. Today we are almost at the end of our talk, and I'm going to wrap up uh, what we've been talking about for the past hour. Um, we talked about where um, the art scene is going in different ways, how localization build leads to community building, leads to knowing the artists in the circle, um, leads to um, how event space can become a place where underground artists can come and also get into the community. Um, and then also about the censorship and, and how we can, as galleries, create or curate the space for, for a neutral environment for everything to be seen and heard. And so we can all learn from this. Um, so we have the last few minutes. If you have any questions, please. Because of the commercial aspect and, and just yeah. practicalities, it's all about what you can put on your walls. Yeah. But what about installation artists and experiential artists? What do you see the space for them in uh, in general? Um, every time we we hear our artists that they want to do an installation show, our hearts skip. Yes. So you understand. Um, it is it is hard, especially in Hong Kong, because the space is so scarce. And if you do an installation of like a two by two meter space, you already can't fit that anywhere else. You know, it's, you can't put that at a home. Um, they to do that because they it's have a, it's the it's space. It's I, I hate putting like responsibilities on people when I don't think it's their responsibility. I, I think they should just take it if they like it. To be honest, like you know, I, I hope it's like that, right? But it's usually not the case. You know, installation artists need to go somewhere. Um, I, I don't have an answer for you. I'm sorry. I really don't. And, and, and it really, maybe it's the audience problem. Maybe it's maybe it's the the way the way it's presented and the how it's digested by the audience is just not applicable for 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 more commerce reasons um i'm i'm not sure i'm or not sure if if charles uh, suggestion succeed like the patronage system revived then it's not a problem because right. it's it's more about uh, how people think and be creative about uh, collecting and patronage that's, can, that's very important. Yeah, you could just literally do a, a, a installation inside your studio, make it look as as good as you can, you know, because it's your space, and and just invite people, right? The people that are your patrons get to see this beautiful space that you created. Maybe that's a way. Um, maybe that's the model that certain artists or certain types of art should go towards because of you know the problems that we have around commerce. Yeah. 
And yeah. that is, uh, can also suggest a patron to, you know, on how to install the work or even adapt it to, to different spaces as well. I think in the end, um, as the, the gallery space also should provide more space or time slot for, for things like this to happen. Um, I know there's f uh, multiple smaller galleries or art space that are doing things like this at the moment, but we need to know how to approach them, uh, I think. And so can, can you all uh, wrap, this up, wrap this up by telling us one thing about how artists can approach you if they are, say, they're underprivileged, they don't have the CV that they need to get in the gallery, or things that are very unconventional, what is the best way to approach you as a gallery? Thank you. For Hart, um, thanks to our founder, Christine and Becky, uh, being a patron. And we, we, uh, we are very proud because uh, last year we host a Household Gods to exhibition at uh, Hart Hall. And actually, uh, literally, I, I met two, two students uh, from Kuntong and they are secondary school students, and one of them being 12, and asked her mom to bring her to, to, to our exhibition, and we actually talked for over an hour. And I think as long as they are passionate enough, say they can always meet us. Johnny? Just come into the gallery and speak to me, honestly. Nice. <laughs> That's the way. Well, well he's uh, yeah. <laughs> so happy okay. to talk to any artist. And to we're we're on Instagram, too. You can, you know, yeah. DM us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Just send us your funniest memes, and then we'll laugh at it together, and that would be great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much today for all these tips and insights. Uh, I hope your, uh, the audience is enjoying this talk as well, um, I, and I hope to see you all in the future. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Asia Society, I want to thank Bertha, Charles, Johnny, and Jeannie. Thank you for being here. And, uh, and we're going to have more of this talk uh, tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, it's 9.30. I think uh, some of the mistakes says 10 o'clock. It's 9.30 here at Asia Society, and we're going to have more of this. And I want to echo um, the ecosystem. I think uh, all the, the panelists have talked about it. And having been in New York uh, before coming back to Hong Kong about uh, almost 10 years now, over nine and a half years ago. I think we're building the ecosystem right now. And, uh, and that's the exciting part. I have seen uh, collaboration that I've never seen when I was in New York. Um, in New York, and there's also kind of have this uh, stratification because they've been around so long. Here, I feel like we're building uh, that infrastructure together. Um, along with the gallery, I remember when I first came back, there weren't that many. There were uh, looking at AGA, Hong Kong Art Gallery Association, and just a space. Remember, uh, we opened 2012, February, Asia Society, Hong Kong. Since I've been back, Daigun, PMQ, um, K11, I mean, so I, this is the exciting part about Hong Kong. Yes, we have issues, and I think some of the stuff that you, Bertha, talked about um, uh, are, are things that we as a community also need to address, uh, whether it's self-censorship or another, and it is, but even in New York, I remember Brooklyn Museum, other museum have had issues, and also we, not just too long ago, Guggenheim um, also uh, took away some artists' artwork of Shebing, which was, um, you know, people complain, complain about, right? And so, so it's not just Hong Kong, but I think, uh, I think versus uh, right, I think creatively, I think the community, we need to talk about these issues, we need to um, stand firm and, and really unite, and, and, and there is no right or wrong, and I think for me, What's exciting about Asia Society Hong Kong right now and the, the ecosystem is we're building together. And, and you know, we have, and, and I have to confess, some of the artwork I don't understand and now NFTs and all that. <laughs> but you know what? It's really, um, it, and I think Charles illuminated on that. But the exciting part is we're in it together. And in terms of uh, also installation arts, um, I, I don't know if you guys mentioned Im Tim Zai. The art, um, the government, I mean, that little island out there, it was a year ago we discovered it. Asia Society um, took our members there and, uh, and to see the island full of creative installation, uh, art from the, uh, the artists, I've, you know, it's, it's really interesting. So even tomorrow, uh, 5.30, we're going to have uh, site specific along with the um, La Lang Show working with APA, uh, uh, Alan Nam, a choreographer. So please join us tomorrow at 5.30. It's tomorrow. 
and Sunday, uh, Stillness and Emotion, uh, I think is the title of the, it's going to be about half an hour, 45 minutes, uh, site-specific work. Um, so please join us, and that's my last plug. But again, I want to thank all four of you for being with us and thank the audience online as well as live uh, for being with us. And, uh, and please, come back to Asia Society anytime. Uh, we're here, and we look forward to collaborating. In fact, we have collaborated with many of the um, artists and gallery uh, this last uh, nine and a half years. So we look forward to continuing the collaboration and looking forward to building um, Hong Kong's art and culture ecosystem together to new heights, rivaling London and New York.